Good day, Anatomy students, and welcome to the second video in the series covering the muscular system and muscle tissue. Um, today is going to get a, a little wordy and complicated, so uh, get your finger ready to hit the pause button. Um, there's going to be a lot of terminology coming at you, um, so get ready and good luck. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, anatomy students will pick up where we left off from video lesson one. Um, let's talk about the, uh, let's get down and look at the individual muscle fiber. Beneath the connective tissue, the endomyceum is found, the plasma membrane. Uh, so the plasma membrane of the muscle cell so remember, um, all cells have a cell or plasma membrane. A muscle cell is no exception. And this plasma membrane will be found underneath the endomyseum. And because it's very specialized for muscle cells, it is referred to as the sarcolemma. And it is the individual plasma membrane or cell membrane of a muscle cell or muscle fiber. When someone says muscle fiber, that is uh, synonymous with a muscle cell. That's the same thing. The cytoplasm, remember all cells have a fluid that is inside the plasma membrane called the cytoplasm. Cyto means cell. Plasm is short plasma for fluid. This is the cell fluid. So the cell fluid of a muscle cell is called the sarcoplasm. So sarcolemma is the cell membrane of a muscle cell, and the sarcoplasm is the cytoplasm of a muscle cell or muscle fiber. It is full of contractile proteins that are arranged in smaller units called myofibrils. Okay, so a muscle fiber is going to contain smaller units called myofibrils. So what we are looking at here. So this picture is a muscle cell, right? And we recognize this because inside we see a nucleus, all right? So cells have a nucleus. We see multiple mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. So this is zooming in uh, one muscle cell or muscle fiber. And a muscle fiber is made up of smaller units called a myofibril. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this is probably another one, eight. We have about eight myofibrils uh, inside this muscle cell or muscle fiber. And you can see it tells us right here we're dealing with a muscle fiber or a muscle cell. So everything that's inside here is going to be part of the muscle cell. So each individual myofibril is made up of even smaller units called myofilaments, which are the very tiny, tiny contractile components. Right here we see thin filament. And right here we see thick filament. And this is the stuff that makes your muscles contract. This is where it happens at the physiological level. All right. All right. The, in the, the physiology of a muscle contraction is done at down here at this subcellular level. We're talking about things that are smaller than the cell inside a muscle cell. This is what makes the muscles contract. And we'll get into a little bit more detail here in just a minute. So here's what we're looking at inside this muscle cell or muscle fiber, all right? And hopefully by this time, a lot of these are gonna look familiar uh, due to you having defined your vocabulary terms. So we have sarcolemma, which we just talked about on the last slide. That is the plasma membrane or cell membrane of a muscle fiber. Sarcoplasm, that's the fluid, the cytoplasm of a muscle, a muscle cell. The myofibril is the contractile unit. So here is one myofibril. The T-tubules, 
these are going to be these tubes that run perpendicular to the long axis of the muscle cell, and they are going to supply uh, various nutrients and ions and things uh, to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is the endoplasmic reticulum of a muscle cell. Hopefully we remember endoplasmic reticulum from biology was one of the organelles of uh, in a cell. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum of a muscle cell are these networks of tubes right here um, being able to supply that muscle cell with um, all of the nutrients and the ions it needs uh, to, do its, to do its job. And then the sarcomere. The sarcomere is one contractile unit. So if we look at this picture, we see a sarcomere right here, and it gives a boundary from this Z-disc, sometimes called a Z-line, to this Z-disc or Z-line right there. And um, we will discuss the components of a sarcomere uh, in the not-too-distant future or right now. So going down and or going up in magnification, we now have taken one myofibril and we're going to zoom in and look at the arrangements of the myofilaments. And this is where it, it's going to start to get the physiology of this is going to get pretty complicated. Uh, increasing the level of magnification, the myofibrils are seen to be composed of filaments and those filaments collectively are referred to as myofilaments, and they are generically called the thick and thin filament. All right, how thick and how thin are we talking? Well, those terms are relative, um, and the only reason they're called thick and thin is because uh, they're compared to each other. Uh, they are not in any stretch of the imagination are the thick filaments thick, by uh, anyone's standards. It's just that they're thicker than the other filaments. These items, these subcellular structures are measured in nanometers. A nanometer, for those of you unfamiliar with very small divisions of the metric system, a nanometer is one thousandth of a micrometer which is one thousandth of a millimeter, which is one thousandth of a meter. So let's back up a little bit. Uh, if a nanometer is one thousandth of a micrometer, which is one thousandth of a millimeter, a thousand times a thousand is a million. So a nanometer is one millionth of a millimeter. And if that, a millimeter is one thousandth of a meter, then that means a nanometer is one billionth, with a B, one billionth of a meter. So think about a millimeter, which is, you know, the, the thickness of your pencil lead, dividing that by a million, that's what these things are measured in. And the quote unquote thick filaments, I did air quotes there as if you could see me, uh, the thick filaments are a whopping 16 nanometers wide. So that's the thick filament. The thin filament uh, come in at a devastating six nanometers or six millionths of a millimeter. Um, those num the, that's so small, I can't, it kind of boggles the mind to try to think of something that small. I mean, it, it's, it is very, very tiny. And to think that something measured in nanometers is what actually moves our bodies, uh, to me, that, that, that is amazing. That when you stand up, to go get something out of the kitchen. When you lift weights, when you run, uh, kick a soccer ball or throw a baseball or 
whatever it is you do, whenever you move your body, you are doing so by a coordinated effort of things of millions of millions of little things that are measured in nanometers all working together. Uh, to me, that is, that is an amazing, an amazing thing. Um, and that's why the muscular system is one of my all time favorite systems to, to, uh, talk about. All right. So let's get back to this diagram. This is a section of myofibril and we have, uh, isolated in, in this diagram, one sarcomere. And remember, a sarcomere goes from Z disc, or sometimes called the Z line, to Z disc. And it's called a disc because if you think three dimensionally, this object will run all the way through this round object as kind of a plate inside of here. And so if we were to cut this myofibril and look at it right on the end, right here at the Z disc, we would see an actual disc there, uh, but we're not. So you have to imagine it running through this whole uh, round collection of all of these uh, myofi uh, myofilaments. Um, imagine if you had a, a pipe full of straws and then you ran a, a blade through that pipe um, that would be the, that's the analogy, the best analogy I can come up with. And that, that blade would then uh, separate the straws from each other inside of that pipe. That's how the Z disc works. So anyway, um, what we have in this sarcomere from Z disc to Z disc is we have the collection of thin filament, which is uh, called actin is made up of, of, a substance called actin, that's the thin filament right here. And then in between all of these thin filaments is the thick filament, and it is known as myosin. And the way the muscle contracts, as you can see those little beads, they're called cross bridges, and during a muscle contraction, they will reach across, grab the thin filament, and then they will, once they grab, they will pull the thin filament in that direction. This one pulls the thin filament in that direction, and that will then bring this Z disc this way and bring this Z disc this way. And that will shorten that overall sarcomere. And if you do that over uh, a few hundred million sarcomeres in the full length of a muscle cell or muscle fiber, then that muscle fiber gets shorter. And that is how a muscle contracts. And that's the simple version. Uh, the complex stuff is coming. The basic functional unit of a skeletal muscle fiber is the sarcomere. Again, sarcomere goes from Z disc to another Z disc. An arrangement of thin and thick filaments sandwiched between two Z discs. That is a sarcomere. This is an actual uh, photograph taken with a scanning electron microscope. Uh, again, because they're measured in nanometers, these things are uh, RFS, which is an acronym, the abbreviation for really freaking small. Uh, again, so you need a very powerful microscope to see them. Uh, this Z disc to Z disc, here's the thin filaments. You can tell uh, because it's not as dark. And then this is the area of thick filament. Now you will notice they have a few areas labeled A band, H zone. Uh, we'll get to that stuff here in just a minute. So here are the areas of a sarcomere, All right? We've talked about Z disc. We've talked about the sarcomere goes from Z disc to Z disc. Uh, and in the middle, you have very middle, which is in the dead center of the thick filament. You have what's called the M line. And then what, the other area you're going to find is the A band, the I band, and the H zone, right? And we will discuss um, those here in the not too distant future. So if we go back and we look, all right, so here is your thick filament. Here's your thick filament. Here's your area of thin filament. And if we skip back to the drawn, thick filament is the thicker band. 
This is your area of thin filament. <clears throat> so in that electron microscope, that would be that area of lighter uh, color, the less dark area. And the darker area is going to be the thick filament. And because you have some thin and thick overlap and this the thick filament, it gives that darker appearance. And under the microscope, this alternating area of thin filament, thick filament, thin filament, thick filament is what gives skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle its striated or banded appearance. <clears throat> so here we are again looking at uh, another artistic rendition, a pretty detailed rendition of a sarcomere. This is just one all by itself pulled out of the myofibril. The thin filaments are comprised mo mostly of the structural protein actin, and the thick filaments are comprised mostly of the structural protein myosin. However, in both types of filaments, there are also other structure structures and regulatory proteins. Um, this is going to get into a little bit more detail than what we will need as, as to what those other proteins are. But you can see there's a whole bunch of these little beads or cross bridges uh, on the thick filament, and they're ready to reach across and grab the thin filament and pull, bend in this direction. Sl and that will slide the thin filament across the thick. And this is what we call the sliding filament theory. And this is uh, how muscles contract based on the sliding filament idea. And the reason they're called sliding filaments because that those thin filaments will slide across the top uh, uh, and bottom. Really, they surround. They're all they're all around the thick filament, but they will slide across uh, over top and and underneath and left and right and all around. They will slide across that thick filament. In the thin filament, actin proteins are strung together by a bead of pearls, uh, or like a bead of pearls in the thick filament. Myosin proteins look like golf clubs bound together. So there's just one uh, myosin protein with the, the heads or cross bridges uh, separated from all of the other myosin proteins. So that thick filament, even though we refer to it as one filament, is really made up of a bunch of myosin proteins all uh, bound together. So here's how the sliding filament mechanism works. Uh, when the we're looking at diagrams here, the artistic version on this side, obviously the scanning electron microscope on this side, and this is kind of a stage by stage uh, section of how the muscle changes in appearance during a contraction. So the muscle gets a signal, hey, let's do our job. It's time to get shorter. And what happens is these areas uh, will change. Some of these areas will change their uh, width, all right? And let's take a look at them. So the areas in question are the H zone, the I band, and the A band. So H zone, I band, and the A band, all right? And this top set is a muscle that is relaxed. It is not contracted yet. So we see an H zone, which is by definition the H zone is the area of thick filament only. There's no thin filament overlap. And next to it, we have the I band. That is the area of thin filament only from here to here with no thick filament overlap. And then we have the A band. The A band is the full length of thick filament. It will include thin filament overlap. And you can see there's some overlap right here. And there's not much overlap because this muscle is relaxed. And the A band is from here to here, the full length of that thick filament. During a contraction, when the thin filament starts to slide across each other, those zones, H zone and I band, that don't contain overlap are going to get smaller because you're going to increase the area of overlap. If you think about it, it just makes sense. If you have a, an area that is one filament without overlap and you increase the overlap, then that zone has to get smaller. And that's what we see happening here. 
as the thin filament is drawn across the thick filament during the contraction right here, you can see it's going this way and this one is being pulled that way, then your H zone, your area of thick filament only, is going to get thinner because it will not include any thin filament overlap. And your I band, which is the area of thin filament only, no thick filament overlap, is going to get smaller because of the increase of overlap. Your A band, which is always the full length of the thick filament or myosin filament, regardless of overlap, is never going to change shape because it does not take into consideration any overlap. So during we look at the scanning electron, you'll notice that this area is getting, this is the area, this is going to have some thin and thick overlap. It's getting thicker because you're increasing overlap. Your H zone, which is your area of thick filament only, you go from here to here, is getting smaller. And down at the bottom, we have a, a fully contracted muscle. Look how, how narrow the H zone is down here because it's, again, thick filament only, no overlap. And you have maximum overlap, which means those zones are going to be minimal in their width. Notice the I band in a relaxed muscle is very wide. And at the very bottom during a fully contracted muscle cell, we see the I band is greatly reduced in width because of the thin and thick filament overlap. Okay. Uh, it's kind of complicated. I, you know, I, I threw out thin and thick filament overlap. I probably said that about 52 times in that, uh, in that slide, but, um, that is how your uh, sliding filament mechanism, that's how it works. Now, there's a whole other explanation as to how the muscle cell gets to that point, but, you know, that, that's going to be for another day. All right, so here's a little step-by-step uh, -step of what happens. So step number one, the myosin head hydrolyze ATP and become reoriented and energized, which basically means they're going to use ATP to do their job. They're going to get ready to grab the thick, the thin filament and go through what's called a power stroke. And you can see in number two, myosin heads bind to actin forming the cross bridge. So now they've, it kind of reminds me of rowing a boat. You see a, a rowing team and they all work together and, you know, the, they put their oars into the water and then they go through a power stroke. And then that moves the boat through the water. So if you think of the boat being the myosin or thick filament and those cross bridges being the oars, you can see how it works. They reach over and they grab the thin filament and then they will power stroke. Notice they go from this angle to this angle. So they clearly are bending in this direction. Same way if you were rowing a boat, you would bend your oars into pull your oars into that direction. And again, ATP is used. So notice we left with ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate because it has pulled away one of the three phosphates and that energy from breaking that bond is what is used to move the move those cross bridges. And then we come over to here, the myosin heads, once they power stroke, they let go and then they get ready to do it again. So they'll grab and keep in mind, there'll be hundreds of these in one in one spot, all grabbing. So they're not in unison. They're all going at the same, uh, at their own pace. There'll be other ones next to it that will grab a hold of the thin filament as they let go. So it's kind of, you know, they, they never all let go at the same time because there's always myosin heads holding those thin filaments. And then they let go and they'll, they'll re-energize and they'll grab that thin filament again. All right, here is an animation that shows uh, how this all works. So we'll just kind of watch it. And it's really hard to read the bottom and get it all in before it moves to the next slide. But um, I'll basically, I will just uh, summarize it. I'll just let it play over and over again so you can see how it works. Calcium comes in and the calcium ions come in supplied from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it opens up the binding sites, which means it gives the cross bridges, it opens up the area where they have to hold on to the thin filament. 
and it opens up the binding site. So it gives them a place to grab a hold. And then once that, you can see the green shift there opens up the binding sites. The cross bridges reach across, they grab a hold, they burn ATP to pull the thin filament across. Now this big black line over here, this is the Z-disc. And we watch the Z-disc as it is pulled. So cross bridges grab the mite and they pull. You can see the Z-disc is pulled across, uh, is pulled towards the end of the thick filament or the myosin. And this is what is going to shorten the overall length of the muscles. Because if you imagine this, a mirror image of this going on on the other side over to our left, then that means those Z discs are going to be pulled towards each other. And when that happens, that shortens the sarcomere. And if every sarcomere in a muscle fiber is getting shorter, then that whole muscle fiber has to be getting shorter. And that is how a muscle contracts. All right. So let's go through. We'll wait till it starts over again. And I'll try to read all of the uh, text at the bottom of each of the slides. The last one is almost impossible. So here we go. The actin potential inhibits the calcium pump pumps and calcium escapes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium binds to troponin, causing the conformational change in the movement of the tropomyosin, exposes the myosin head binding sites in the white on the actin blue. After the myosin head binds to the actin, the energy from ATP is necessary to produce movements of the myosin head. The process repeats itself many times. Single, see, you just can't, it's just too hard to do. So what you should do is just watch it. Uh, I've, I know I've let this play about nine times, um, but this is an animation of how it works. So one more time, cross bridges reach over, they grab the thin filament, they go through their power stroke, and they pull the thin filament across the thick filament. And that is, in essence, the easy explanation of how a muscle contracts. All right, that's it for video lesson two here on the muscular system. Uh, I told you uh, it was going to get pretty wordy. So hopefully it didn't melt anyone's brain. and. Um, you guys were picking up what I was putting down. All right. You got any questions as always, um, shoot me an email. Uh, they'll, of course there is an exit slip. If we are remote, there will be an exit slip on Schoology. So head on over and, uh, answer those questions to the best of your ability. And because I'm a YouTuber now, uh, I have to say, uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk at you later.